Okay, uh, hello everyone. Welcome back to ELC 3204. Um, this is recording for uh, lecture five of the optical part. I'm sorry, uh, lecture four was probably a little bit long. Uh, so the receiver part, uh, this is a uh, receiver part for lecture five uh, would be a lot easier because we 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 need it to uh, deal with uh, some atomic uh, concepts. Um, I feel it's quite necessary to uh, to clarify some uh, once for all. Um, I hope uh, you found that helpful and uh, have have learned something. Um, so a receiver part is actually uh, so once we have sorted uh, how to build a semiconductor. The receiver part become really easy, uh, so it's just opposite uh, to uh, the transmitter, optical transmitter. Um, and this part is really important for exams as well. So uh, you you have seen some past exam papers. One question is always from uh, the optical uh, receiver. Um, uh, but uh, the exam questions are not. Uh, really, uh, very difficult in the optical part. Um, so basically, you do not need to uh, 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 derive the missing steps in the in the slides uh, for for those equations. Um, but you do need to uh, uh, understand concepts in the form of equations. So that would uh, make exams a lot easier. Uh, let's hope. About that uh, in more details uh, later on. Um, so let's have a general look at the optical detector, and then we have three uh, mathematical concepts to look at, and then at the end we look at the past uh, one of the past uh, event paper uh, together. Okay. So. Um, so now we have the receiver part. We need we receive the optical signal, and then we want to demodulate it um, based on its uh, intensity. Uh, okay, so the receiver uh, basically is based on absorption. So um, the initial state is that uh, the electron is uh, in the valence. Uh, valence uh, band is in the stable uh, status on the ground state, so lower energy state. And then when there's an uh, electron coming, so uh, sorry, when there is a photon coming, the electron will be uh, uh, boosted to onto the higher energy state. So during receive a photon, uh, a photon of energy. The photon of energy equals H F. H is uh, Planck's constant. So uh, if it appears in the exam, this constant value will be given to you. And F is uh, the frequency, which equals to C over lambda. So this is, this is a fixed value. Ideally, we want uh, this phantom of energy to equal to the uh, band gap. So you receive this energy, and then you just happen to be able to jump onto the uh, conduction band. And when the, ele uh, when the electron jump onto a uh, conduction band, it means the, the bond is no longer stable, and this uh, Electron is is free. It's become free like electron. It can stimulate electricity, and then uh, by measuring the electricity, we can infer um, how high the uh, optical signal power is. Okay, so in reality, so in reality, uh, we have uh, the the uh, the a phantom of energy, it is, we normally uh, make it higher than the band gap. So here, uh, the higher band is, uh, higher energy band is the conduction band, and lower energy band is uh, 
the uh, valence band. Uh, I probably didn't uh, mention earlier that all materials they have their own uh, uh, conduction band and uh, valence band. They have their own band gap. So here for P uh, type, we have uh, higher energies levels. And then for N type, we have lower energy levels. So in different sections, theoretically, um, it's, it's all possible for electrons to, to be excited to, onto, to boost it onto the valence band. But uh, the way we dope the junction is that normally the combination that uh, produce light or, um, or the absorption happen in depletion region. So depletion region is called depletion region is also known as the barrier. It means that there's supposed to be, ideally there's supposed to be no uh, free electron or free hole in this uh, region. So when, uh, uh, when we do uh, absorption, so when there is light coming, it will create a new electron hole pair. So this is a new electron. This is new hole. Um, so the opposite is a transmitter where electron and hole they combine this region. Okay. So we mentioned before as a receiver uh, for the fo photodiode, what we do is we do reverse um, uh, bears. So we place the positive contact. We connect the positive contact to the N type, and then we connect the negative contact to the P type. So there are a lot of uh, electrons here uh, in the in the N type, and so it's connected to the positive uh, contact, which means the positive contact will uh, will hold the the will attract these electrons, will hold this as close as possible. So the middle region wouldn't have any free electrons. And similarly, uh, so in the P-junction, we have a lot of free holes. And then the negative contact will uh, try to hold, try to attract these free holes as uh, strong as possible. So in the middle region, there's no free holes. So the middle region is supposed to be kind of empty. Uh, there should be no free uh, electrons and no free holes. So if we expose this region to uh, optical signal, the optical, optical signal will generate new pair of uh, electron and hole here. Okay, so uh, the first mathematical uh, concept we are going to learn is the efficiency. Uh, so Ideally, what we want is the relationship between the photodiode's output current and the input optical power. So we want to know that we have this much of input power, how much output current we generate. So this equation is a more uh, theoretical equation that you, you don't need to uh, remember. Um, but it's good to look at uh, what this parameter is uh, uh, represent so E is uh, the charge of one electron, and R is the uh, Fresnel reflection coefficients. We used it before for determining uh, the modes for fiber, and H uh, is uh, Planck's constant. So HF is a font uh, is a quantum of energy. Uh, and alpha zero here is uh, absorption, absorption coefficient. It's different for different materials. And then D is a, a width of uh, absorption region. So basically we want uh, absorption to happen in the depletion region. But in reality, the absorption region would be larger because the creation of new pair here could happen in other regions as well, especially where electrons or holes are scarce. 
um, so absorption uh, region is larger. But uh, rule of thumb is that uh, we want uh, this absorption region or this pure uh, depletion region to be as large as possible so that we can collect more photons. So we want it to be as large as possible for the benefit of uh, uh, collecting more optical power or achieving better efficiency. So let's look at efficient uh, efficiency. Um, let, let's first finish this uh, equation here. So alpha is uh, uh, alpha zero here is the absorption coefficient. So basically, alpha d for both of them it should be if they're higher, uh, the thing in the uh, exponential function would be lower, and then overall would be higher. So basically, we want the absorption uh, coefficient to be as high as possible. So different materials, uh, they have different characteristics. So we use them uh, in at different wavelengths. And then D here, uh, we also want it to be as, as high as possible, as I mentioned earlier, for the sake of efficiency. Um, Okay, so we want eventually we want to know the efficiency. So we want to know, for example, we co collect this number of electrons. Sorry, we collect this number of photons from optical signal, and then based on this photo uh, signals, uh, the photodiode can generate this number of electrons. Okay, so this is uh, electron rate. This is photon rate. But quant quantum efficiency also depends on material, but this doesn't tell us uh, this doesn't tell us the uh, energy uh, aspect. So we we have another definition with which is uh, responsivity, which is uh, output current photo current uh, output from the photodiode divided by input optical power. So IP over P0. So uh, we want to build a re relationship between these two. So first of all, what is the number of uh, pho photon? If we know the optical power, P0, and then we know a photon of energy is HF, so uh, for each photon coming in, we have received HF. So how many photons we have collected? It will be P0 divided by HF. And then we put this together, we get the output current value uh, like this and uh, responsivity like this. Let's uh, look at the slides, uh, sorry, nodes that I would uh, have written on the whiteboard um, to to make these equations to progress uh, with uh, better purpose. Okay, so the first equation is the one I showed you the first, uh, which is photo current. So this is a current produced by the uh, optical detector photodiode. And P0 is input optical power, and this is a photon of energy. And this material's absorption um, uh, coefficient, and this is a weight of the uh, uh, absorption region. And this is a Fresnel's coefficient, uh, reflection coefficient. Um, we don't we don't really need this uh, equation. We don't really need to remember this equation. Um, so the the biggest ob observation from here is that if we have higher this, then we get better higher current. So we want higher absorption coefficient from the material. We want a larger area of absorption region so we can collect more photons. And then photon, uh, uh, quantum efficiency is a very important concept. It is the number of electrons divided by the number of photons. 
So what is the number of electrons? So we have the total current, and then E is uh, the charge of, uh, E here is a charge of uh, each electron. So how many electrons we have? The current divided by the charge of uh, one electron, right? So I have, this is the number of electrons. What is the number of photons? We have the total optical uh, power and then a quantum of power. So this is the number of uh, uh, photons power. So this is the number of uh, uh, photons. So we put this two into this uh, equation. We get the quantum efficiency as a function of uh, of like this. So we we are only left with this part. So this is also uh, so quantum efficiency has the same trend as the current. So we want larger uh, absorption coefficient and the larger width of the absorption uh, region. And then uh, we can also uh, so use this equation. We can also we, we, we can also get uh, the current as a function of everything else. So this is a current produced by the uh, photodiode. This is the optical power input into the photodiode. And then uh, this is a, a, a quantum of energy. And this is a quantum efficiency. And E is a charge of one electron. So now we can get the responsivity, uh, which is input output energy efficiency. Uh, for the photo uh, photo diode, uh, so so definition of res responsivity, the input output efficiency, is the uh, output uh, current divided by the input uh, optical. So we put this efficient. Uh, sorry, we put this power to the la left hand side. We get this. So basically, in the exam, if you are asked to uh, evaluate R, the first thing you need to remember is that R is input-output efficiency. The definition is input-output efficiency. And then you need to think, what is uh, current? What is power? So power, uh, optical power is uh, a quantum of, of energy multiply how many quantums we have. And then uh, current is the number of electrons multiply uh, the charge of one electron. And then we can link uh, this two to uh, quantum uh, efficiency. So we can represent uh, uh, input output, uh, so responsivity as a function of quantum efficiency. Uh, we will look at more examples as we go. Let's come back to the slides. So, based on this equation, we are expecting that respons responsivity would increase with wavelengths. So we can see that uh, for different materials, the responsivity would increase with wavelengths up to a stage, and then it will drop. So why it drops uh, here? It is because as wavelengths increases. So if we look at, um, Here, a quantum of energy. This equals H C over uh, wavelengths. So, as wavelengths increases, the quantum of energy would decrease, and then eventually it becomes lower than the band gap. So, we cannot really generate uh, this uh, uh, new electron anymore. So the response, uh, responsive, uh, responsivity 
would uh, would drop after a cer certain uh, point. Okay. So here's an example. It's very simple. So uh, the parameters of speed of light, Planck constant, and the change on a uh, charge on 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 an uh, electron, they are all given. So the equation for the responsivity is here, and then output uh, photo current is here. So uh, the quantum efficiency uh, is given to you here. And then you need to calculate R. So H, C, they are all known. And then E uh, is also known. And then wavelength is also given here. So you can calculate R quite easily. So respon uh, responsivity can be calculated very easily. And then secondly, based on this uh, responsivity, if you have the current uh, of, of this value, how much uh, optical power is required. So we simply put R to this side. So we get uh, P0, uh, the optical power equals current divided by uh, responsivity. Uh, so exam questions will be something like this. Okay, so one uh, uh, important, um, okay, one uh, important concept here is uh, PIN photo dialed. So basically, as I mentioned before, we want uh, this region to be as large as possible, so that we uh, uh, we can collect more photons. Uh, so what we normally do is, so for example, if we only have a PN junction, then the middle part would be a depletion, depletion uh, region. So in depletion region, there is roughly no uh, free electrons. So what we can also do is we dope here as N type, dope here as P type, and then in the middle we just leave a region that has no doping. It's an intrinsic uh, uh, region. So the effective depletion uh, region would be larger because we want the depletion region to be free of, uh, to be to doesn't to, to not to have any free electrons. So we want this region to be large, as large as possible, so it can collect uh, more fo photons. So um, if we increase this region, we can collect more photons. But what is the uh, disadvantage? What is the disadvantage? So I asked this in class. Uh, one student gave a really good answer. So if we increase this region, the response time would become uh, longer. So it, it takes longer for the electron to move to uh, this side. So we call this movement uh, drift because we have, uh, you remember the difference between drift and uh, diffusion. So for diffusion, there's no uh, external electric field. But drift is uh, uh, electron movement that's driven by uh, uh, elect uh, external electrical field, electric field. So we have the, the positive uh, pole uh, here and the negative pole here. So obviously the, the new uh, electron will move um, towards the positive uh, charge. So this is drift. So we have the drifting time. So drift time equals to the width of uh, the full depletion layer. So here, this layer. And uh, the velocity of ca uh, so carrier drift velocity. So this is also normally a constant that's, that would be given to you. And uh, if this uh, time is become longer. What is another associated uh, by effect? So 
the delay is all, always related to uh, is always related to uh, uh, bandwidth. So if time become long uh, longer, then the bundle effective bandwidth become uh, lower. So that is uh, the dis disadvantage. So always rule of thumb uh, in radio frequency in optical communication, if you have longer delay, then the bandwidth would be uh, smaller. Okay, so the second uh, very important um, uh, concept is that the pin diode effect effectively form us a, a RC circuit. So for RC circuit, we have resistance and we have capacitance. So let's briefly have a review on the RC circuit first. So this is a example of RC circuit. Uh, so if we do charging, um, the voltage change would be uh, vo voltage uh, charging would uh, change over time. So the time constant, the delay is uh, RC, R is uh, re uh, resistance, C is capacitance. And then the bandwidth is uh, re a reverse proportionate to the delay, you see? So the photo photodiode uh, bandwidth, oh, we, we are going to look at this a little bit later. So this is a rule of thumb. So if photodiode uh, form, we need to decide on its uh, uh, capacitance. So let's look at its capacitance on the slides. Okay, so this is also a very simple equation. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, this is a width of the of the depletion region, and then A is the area cross area of the of of this layer cross area of the of of this layer, and here we have another constant which will be given to you uh, at the, the exam. So if we look at an example, uh, so we introduced three equations, and now we give them uh, some values. So we know that, um, uh, for example, uh, first we need to decide on the drift time uh, when we have uh, drift velocity of this much. So we just put a drift velocity here, <clears throat> and we have the width here. We can get the uh, drift time, so we can get the drift time, drift time here. And then when we, after we calculate the drift time, we can put it in here and then get the uh, so the bandwidth. Okay, and the capacitance uh, we have this is a uh, constant. This is uh, area. Uh, that, that's also given to you, and this is a width, and it's given to you here. So uh, the capacitance is this. Uh, this is a bandwidth. Okay. So eventually, uh, the photodiode part is the RC circuit, and then it is normally immediately uh, connected to an amplifier. The amplifier is also another RC circuit. So, because we have, so normally uh, the, the general assumption is that uh, the resistance of the fo uh, photodiode is really huge, so it can be ignored in this uh, parallel connection. And then the overall capac cap uh, capacitance is the capacitance of the junction, plus, so the capacitance of the photodiode plus the capacitance of uh, the amplifier. And uh, the, we also have this uh, load uh, re resistance for the 
for the amplifier as well. So what is the bundle width of the pulse detection in the electrical domain? So for the whole system, what is the bundle width? So before we have the bundle width of the photodiode uh, based on the drift time. And now what is the uh, overall bundle width? So let's do some calculation. Um, so basically, uh, the bundle width is uh, equal bundle width equal to two pi r uh, one over two pi r c. So if I know the cap uh, capacitance, and if I know the target bu uh, bundle width, then we have we can calculate the resistance. So uh, here's a discussion. Uh, so what is the re relationship between the two uh, bundle weights? So the first bundle weight is based on is a uh, is a bundle weight of the junction that that is calculated based on uh, drift time. The second one is after uh, after we connect this junction with the amplifier, we get the overall. Um, Bundle ways. So let's come back to the to the node. So the so rule of sum is that we have bundle ways equals two pi uh, uh one over two two pi R C. Okay, uh, for the photodiode bandways, <clears throat> it acts as a RC circuit, but it's not exactly a RC circuit. So we normally use the approximation like this for the bandways as shown in the slides. However, if we, uh, we want to estimate if it's a really uh, a totally equivalent to RC circuit, its bandways would, would be evaluated like this. We we'll do this only for the sake of comparing to the system um, uh, bandwidth. So for, for the whole system, we have post detectors. So everything's done for the whole system. The bandwidth is two pi RC. The capacitance is a capacitance of the photodiode plus the capacitance of the amplifier. So this bandwidth would be smaller than this bandwidth. So we calculate this one here as a reference to the system bandwidth. But in reality, we normally use this equation. And in, in the exam, you should use this equation for the photo diode bandwidth. OK. So come back to the slides. And now, um, so let's do a little bit more uh, calculation here. Uh, there are still very simple calculations. So the new question is, if we decrease the weight, we decrease the weight here to a smaller amount, can we, um, we still get uh, a very high target bandwidth? So, uh, so bandwidth equals two pi r c um, one, and then c equals c j plus c amplifier. So when we reduce, uh, when we reduce our weights, it means uh, this capacitance become higher. So this capacitance would become higher. So if we still want to uh, achieve, uh, we can we can always achieve a target bandwidth. What we need to do is we 
if we increase the capacitance, we need to reduce the resistance. So that's the thing that's uh, the, uh, an exam question, uh, uh, an answer to the exam question uh, uh, is uh, expected. So basically, here we say we decrease the weights, right? So what is the effect of decreasing the weights? We increase the capacitance. So we still can achieve any band weights, but all we need to do is also decrease the load resistance so that we can, we can achieve a target band weights. So now if we put this into equations, when we decrease the weights, we have increased the capacitance, we have increased the capacitance, so we need to uh, decrease uh, the resistance. Okay. Uh, yes, no problem. So the resistance here is uh, one, a little bit over 100. So before it was over 1K. So we reduced the resistance. Right, uh, now we, are, we need to look at the third, uh, so the last important mathematical concept. Um, I haven't uh, gotten here uh, doing the uh, in-person lecture. Um, I was a little bit slow uh, 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 in class today, uh, but I'm going to cover this part anyway so that we can take a look at the exam questions. Uh, next time I'll try to cover this part in the in-person lecture again um, so that we have uh, everything covered for everybody. Okay, so the third important uh, concept. So, so the first one, if we recall, the first one is the responsivity that uh, is about the efficiency uh, between the light and the current conversion. So how much current we can generate based on uh, 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 optical power. And then the second one is about the capacitance. So it's, uh, it's the equivalence of RC circuit and uh, the related bandwidth, delay and bandwidth. And then the third uh, concept would be SNR. We need to evaluate SNR so that uh, we can plan ahead how much transmit power we need. So first of all, the thermal noise, we have thermal noise. Uh, it's also quite simple to calculate. We have K is a constant and B was uh, the bandwidth and T is absolute temperature. So please be careful here as an exam. If you are given a, a temperature in degree, you need to uh, transform that into absolute temperature. We'll look at it uh, later. And then this, is, this is load resistance that we have calculated before. This is, this is load resistance that we have calculated before. On top of the thermal noise, we have another two sources of noise. One is called one is from dark current. Another is called quantum noise. They are kind of opposite to each other. This is very interesting. So dark current is a current uh, that is uh, that that in the circuit when there is no light. So ideally, we want to generate current based on light. We, we want, uh, so, so the point of photodiode is to convert uh, optical power into current. But when there, there's no light, if there's already current, then this is noise. So it's called dark noise. So when there's no light yet, we we'll, or, or we'll already have this current. This happens when there is background radiation uh, and it could happen, especially uh, drift, uh, sorry, uh, diffusion in comparison to drifting. 
And then quantum noise is opposite. It happens when we have light. So when we have light, we have we should uh, we should uh, boost uh, one electron to uh, the higher band. So basically, we want we want to get a free ele electron based on a quantum of, of energy. However, when there is light, it could happen that no free uh, electron is generated. So this would give us another source of noise. We call it quantum noise. So quantum noise is uh, generated in light. Dark uh, current is uh, is there in dark. So they are opposite to each other. So we have the normally we, we will give you the drift. Uh, sorry, the dark current, which is uh, in the material itself, and then this is a. Uh, uh the 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 photo current photo photo current so the current that's produced by the uh photo diode we calculate before uh we use it to calculate the quantum efficiency and uh, the re responsivity we use this uh, the same current <clears throat> and now the noise is proportionate to the amount of current the photo diode produce. And now the SNR is uh, uh, electrical signal power. So IP was the current amplitude. Now we want power. And then we have the um, <clears throat> uh, sharp noise, which is a uh, dark current and quantum noise. And then we have uh, uh, some, uh, thermal noise. And if we know the noise figure of the amplifier, the second part is simply the uh, thermal noise. The first part with all the um, parameters that we know, multiply the noise figure. So eventually the SNR is given by, this is the current uh, produced by the photodiode. This is current uh, produced by photodiode. And this is, uh, dark current that's normally given to you as a constant. And this is, once again, the current produced by photodiode. And all of these are parameters that will, give, uh, that will be uh, given to you. So let, let's look at some examples. <clears throat> so for the thermal uh, noise, uh, we use this equation as a uh, previous page. So we normally have a uh, temperature, and then this should uh, be transformed into absolute temperature. So please be careful here. And then here, uh, K is also a constant. This is bandwidth, and uh, this is resistance. And we get this, uh, uh, we get this uh, uh, a thermal noise. And now the next step, if we know the uh, noise figure, then the shot noise that is caused by both dark, uh, oh, well, not there yet. Uh, this should multiply to uh, the previous thermal noise part. So this part is uh, the shot noise with uh, dark current and uh, quantum noise. So this is a current of uh, produced by the photodiode, and uh, dark current value is also given to you. Uh, you have the bandwidth the same as before, so you have the shot noise. And uh, remember, this uh, uh, noise figure is two. So what we have the overall noise is uh, the shot noise, and then the thermal noise multiply noise figure. And this is a uh, current produced by the photodiode. So eventually, uh, finally, we, we get uh, the SNR. So uh, just one a little bit uh, step further um, before looking at exam questions. We, if we talk about power budget, we did it before for various communication where we take into account the attenuation over distance. 
is the same for fiber. So fiber also have uh, fiber laws. Uh, that's uh, laws over distance. <clears throat> and uh, if we transmit uh, BPSK or say non-return to zero, we have a uh, high and low. High is P1 and low is P0. And distinct, a distinct, a distinction ratio uh, would uh, so we want this thing, uh, so the high power and low power, we want these two uh, to be as far away as possible, so that the I diagram would uh, <clears throat> open well. <clears throat> you remember I diagram. So we, we want the high and the low to be as far away as possible for the distinct, uh, distinction uh, ratio. So we only, actually only Bring in these two elements compared to the previous SNR. So one thing to uh, uh, to think about uh, here we have. Uh, let me first tell you the definitions, and then uh, I tell you how to simplify this uh, thinking in the exam. So first, the di distinct distinction ratio is a high power divided by low power. Okay, and the average power is the so average between high and the low. And, the, and the, for the power budget, the optical power we use is the difference between these two. Do you remember the mapping between uh, electrical to uh, and the optical? We care about the, uh, the input uh, difference, the input range, and then we have an output range. So this is bas basically the output range. We use this signal power for link budget, we replace this. Uh, we use this in SNR. So based on these two equations, if we have a, a dis, uh, ex, extinction show, then we can calculate high and low. So normally, um, so let, let me try to simplify your thinking in the exam because there are a few steps kind of a little bit messed up in the middle. So normally what happens really is that when the extinction uh, ratio is very high, for example, 10 dB is already quite high. 10 dB means the, uh, the P, P1 is 10 times higher than P0. Then approximately you can think that the low power is just no power, it's just zero. And then high power is a peak power, P max. Then the average here is just half of the p max, and uh, the uh, the optical range here is uh, is uh, is also just a uh, p max because uh, p zero we just think is zero because they they are two uh, they are uh, two different from each other. So basically, eventually we have uh, this the range is twice of the average power. So average power is in the middle. If the <coughs> lower bound is on zero, then the higher, higher is two times of the reference, the average. So normally if we give you an average, and if we give you a very high extinction ratio, you can just multiply this by two and then calculate SNR. So uh, so this is a signal power in SNR. So let's uh, look at the example question that contains this saying. Uh, 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 before we do that, just one simple step. So for example, uh, here we say the fiber loss is this much and uh, we have this long of fiber, so we know how much power is lost. Then from this power, we would, uh, uh, the power would reduce to this level. We would, uh, uh, the power would reduce to this level. Okay, uh, so this is also a quite simple step, uh, but we, we need to put them together in an exam question, so let's, uh, Look at uh, exam question from last year. Uh, so, 
so exam question here I'm going to show you today. I'm going to uh, only give you tips uh, today. And then uh, in the final week uh, for the revisions, I'll give you the uh, exact values so that you can confirm your calculation. Uh, I hope that's okay. So today I'm just going to tell you the steps and what equations to use. So the first question, uh, we have uh, this photo dialed, and we have quantum efficiency, and we have wavelengths. So basically, this is uh, uh, res responsivity. So responsivity, the first step, uh, the definition of responsivity is that it's current produced by the photodiode divided by the uh, optical power. And what is current? It is, <coughs> oh, sorry, uh, the second concept, oh, we, we have the photo efficiency. What is photo efficiency? It is uh, the number of uh, uh, electrons uh, collected divided by the number of uh, uh, photons collected. Let me have a check. Yes, yes. So, uh, what is the number? What is the number of uh, electrons? So, number of electrons is the current divided by uh, the charge of one electron. So we know how many electrons we have, and uh, how many photons we have. We have the input uh, optical power divided by a, a quantum of energy, which is H5. So here, wavelength is given to you, so you can calculate H5. H will be given to you as well in the exam. And then, and then uh, photo efficiency is, is given to you here. Um, so, so E will be given to you. So what you need to do is to link all of this together. Um, so you, you need to represent R as a function of, uh, of uh, quantum efficiency. So, so that you can calculate re responsivity. And then uh, when you know R and you know the photo current IP, then you can calculate uh, this uh, uh, optical power required. That is the second question. So if you, if you uh, check the uh, previous slides, uh, you can um, get the correct equations. But, but basically, uh, what you really need to remember is the definition of responsivity and the definition of uh, the quantum efficiency in the form of equations. Uh, so after the first step, uh, the following step would become easier. So the second mathematical uh, concept is uh, the capacitance, bundle waves, and delay. So we have the capacitance. Uh, we ask you to calculate uh, the uh, load re resistance required for uh, for target bundle waves. So bundle waves equals to one over two pi r c. So if you if you put r to the left hand side and b to here, then you you can calculate r because you have uh, you know the capacitance here. So you need to calculate a uh, thermal noise current. So this uh, for this thing you need to remember uh uh that equation a little bit. Okay, so the so the thermal noise here. So K will be given to you. Temperature will be given to you. The so load resistance and the bound waves will be from the previous uh, question. So it should be the answer to your previous question. 
So now it's a thermal, thermal, thermal noise. You have the temperature. And here, from the previous step, you have calculated uh, the resistance. And here, you also have uh, bandwidth, so you can calculate thermal noise. So you need to calculate this step correct. Uh, this step uh, can be correct. Otherwise, it will be more and more wrong later on. OK, so now you need to calculate the sharp noise. So sharp noise uh, include dark current and quantum uh, noise. So uh, the dark current is given to you. The quantum uh, noise is based on the current produced by the photodiode, which is calculated in your previous step. Uh, here you calculate uh, the, the current. Uh, here current is given to you. So basically you, you use this two uh, current and then I dark current and then two E B and B is a bandwidth uh, here. Okay, so I'll calculate that. Uh, so last step. So if you have a fiber fifty uh, k, and then the loss is uh, zero point two uh, dB uh, per kilometer. So the first first step, you can calculate how much power would be reduced. So it's the same as the example we saw before. It's uh, ten dB. So the receive power average receive power would be ten times lower. So ten mu watts. And here uh, we tell you that um, the uh, the ex extinction ratio is more than ten dB, which means the uh, we have a uh, optical power range the high power and low power, they are very far away from each other. So the, the average optical power that we use should be uh, half, uh, sorry, uh, two times of the average. Just check the previous slide. So I have the power and we have noise from, from all the previous steps. Then you can calculate the SNR. So all, all of these are tips. Um, so it would be helpful if you um, do some calculation. And then in the final week, I will tell you the, the values of the, those uh, answers so that you can confirm that your answers are correct. So yeah, that's all for, uh, for lecture five. Um, see you next week.